Hey everyone, I'm Steve from GamersNexus.net and this is our first episode of a new segment we're calling The Shop. And the whole purpose of this is to give you a behind the scenes look and some sneak peeks at upcoming hardware, maybe games, but mostly hardware that we're working on behind the scenes, what we're working on reviewing and testing actively and hopefully provide some insight earlier as to what we think of those products before the finalized review. So this week we're working on a few things. We've got two Steam controllers with a Steam Link. I'll talk about those in a moment. We've got the Corsair Void headset, Logitech's new G933 wireless headset, which I reviewed the G633 wired version of it. Basically the same thing with a couple of differences, uh, like wireless. And then we've also got the MSI B150A Pro motherboard and a couple of new Intel Skylake SKUs for CPUs. And I'm going to be honest, I actually don't know what SKUs they are just yet because I haven't connected them to a board yet. And the IHS on the CPUs is marked as Intel Confidential. So haven't plugged them in yet, don't know what they are, but should be fun to test and we'll get a more complete Intel Skylake CPU lineup out there soon in terms of benchmarks. But let's go back to the Steam stuff. So from Valve, we have two Steam controllers and the Steam Link. The controllers are somewhat similar to the Xbox 360 controller. If you have an Xbox 360 wireless controller, the profile is similar, but the buttons are actually pretty different. And this is maybe something that most of you already know. But the main thing is the input device. So instead of using multiple analog joysticks, Valve has opted for a haptic input device for the right thumbstick and also for the D-pad. So when you roll around on those, you'll feel a haptic vibration similar to what you get from modern phones when texting. So that's pretty interesting. We're working on reviewing that. And then the Steam Link is probably the lesser known of Steam and Valve's hardware operation right now. The Link is similar to the Doco, if you remember that from NZXT. And the Link basically serves as a video and USB pass-through to transfer your remotely rendered game data to a TV. So the way that works is you have a system set up, maybe in your bedroom or whatever, and that's rendering your game content with your high-end GPU, CPU, all that. That uses the on-die encoder on the GPU, passes that data via internet, LAN, to the link, and then the link passes that data via HDMI to your TV. The purpose of this is to allow remote rendering of your game content and playback on maybe like a family TV or family room setup, living room setup, something like that. The objective being more group or party style play of games without having the main Beast PC located adjacent to the TV. And the Steam Link also serves as a USB pass-through. So you connect your controllers, your wireless keyboard, things like that to the link, which is located near your TV, maybe mounted to the back of it. You connect those to the link, that takes the USB input, passes it to your remote system, which then processes the input as normally, as you would normally process it, and then passes back and forth for whatever other data you're transmitting between the two devices. So this introduces some latency to your input, and we're not sure what that latency is just yet. We haven't measured it yet, that's hence this video. But the latency should be pretty low, and in just brief hands-on playing, I can tell you that it is pretty unnoticeable for most games. Now, if you're playing competitively, playing competitive CSGO, you want to mitigate that latency wherever possible, and trying to compete with a pass-through device is probably not the best idea, but for most other games, it's, it's fine. It's certainly playable for RPGs and things of that nature. Moving on to the Corsair Void, this is Corsair's wireless headset, so this is a pretty cool one. I actually really like this so far. The review is forthcoming, of course. I'm sure I'll have some things to complain about, as always, but overall, I do like this headset quite a bit, and it looks like it's going to become my primary headset pushing aside the Plantronics Gamecom 788, which is actually, for a $50 to $60 headset, one of my favorite options out there. So the Void is very good. The Corsair Void is a $150 wireless headset. It uses a radio frequency transmitter connected to basically an amplifier, if you have the, the special edition, whatever it's called, limited edition maybe, and that connects to USB. So you have a USB going to a dongle that extends the range of the radio frequency transmitter, the wireless transmitter. That connects to your headset, and I've gotten pretty good range. I can walk probably, it's about 60, 70 feet line of sight, meaning if you have a straight line to the receiver transmitter, then you get about 70 feet. If you're walking around a house, obviously it's different because you have walls that damage the, the range of the signal pretty heavily, but I can still walk around a couple of rooms without problem. So I'm a fan of that 
and I like using it for conference calls, press events, things like that, where I can just walk around, mute my mic, and continue doing things that I actually need to do <laughs> while listening to the press event. So pretty cool. The audio quality is very good. I haven't done a direct comparison yet with the G933, G633 headsets from Logitech, but it is certainly up there competing with them, if not slightly worse or slightly better than them. And the microphone is decent quality. It's better than the Logitech headset quality from our previous review. You can check that out. And surprisingly, it's still not quite as good as the Gamecom, but it's, it's a good mic. I can't complain too much. So more on that coming up. That is an RGB headset priced at $150, and we'll have a full review pretty soon. Not sure when yet, but either this week, end of this week, or early next. The next item we're looking at is MSI's B150A Pro Gaming Motherboard. So this is a B150 motherboard, as indicated by the name. That means its chipset is B150, not the Z170 flagship chipset that we've all become familiar with, the performance-grade chipset. And we also looked at an H170 board, the Biostar board. Reviews already on the site, video reviews forthcoming. So we had a couple of boards to look at with this MSI B150A Pro motherboard. The B150 board is technically using a chipset classified for business by Intel, but it's perfectly fine for gaming as well, similar to the H170, H110. You can kind of use it for mainstream, for gaming, whatever, as long as you're not overclocking. That's the primary limitation of these non-Z chipsets is the overclocking. So we're going to be looking at the power draw, the boot times, the security features. That's a big thing for the business class chipsets, even if it is in a gaming motherboard. Looking at all that pretty soon, as far as the, the colors and the scheme, one thing I did like quite a bit about this already was on the right side of the board, there's a little strip that's oddly colored. It's, it's sort of undyed motherboard, and I need to confirm with MSI if that's a pre-production thing or if that's the final sample of the board. But what I can tell you for sure is that there are LEDs in this strip off to the side. You can run them a couple different colors, but it looks good as red because the rest of the board is red and black. And that's just sort of a neat feature. LEDs are definitely becoming a big thing lately with the keyboards, the headsets like the Void and the Logitech ones, and of course the NZXT Hue that we just looked at. So that ties the motherboard in more closely with all the other operating devices out there with RGB LEDs. Pretty cool stuff. I'm not sure how it performs just yet, so don't go buy it yet. Wait for our review on that. But that's kind of what we're looking at right now. So the final two items are the Skylake CPUs, and we've got some new video card content coming as well. No new video cards, but new content, and I am getting a couple of existing cards in stock for our first run through on the R9 380X, for example. I've only tested the 380 and 390 at this point, but the 380X is coming from PowerColor. We've got a 390X coming from MSI as a permanent sample that will be used in future benchmarks, particularly with Battlefront. And I'm hoping to do some updated GPU benchmarks with all the driver changes and things like that that have been going on lately. So stay tuned for that. In terms of Skylake, we've already tested the 6700K. You can find that content on the channel and the site. The 6600K I have, and is of course the i5, so that makes it the more popular of the two CPUs. And then we've got some other Intel SKU that, as I said, I'm not sure what it is yet, but I'm looking forward to testing that as well. well I'm hoping it's a, a non-K SKU. We'll see shortly, though. And, uh, and hopefully put that through the ranks, through the benchmarks, especially with a B150 board if it is non-K, otherwise with all the Z170 stuff we have. So all that stuff, pretty cool looking. I'm excited to put out all the content. We're working more on video, as you all know. Have the set, set up, have the lights, the lav mics, which I'm still trying to figure out the best way to, to hide the, conceal the wire. But everything's going very well here. We're pretty excited with all the benchmarking, all the feedback from you guys. As always, leave comments. I do read all of them or almost all of them, even if I don't reply to all of them. And if you like this type of coverage, if you want to help us out, check the Patreon link in the post roll video. As always, huge help from those of you on that site backing us. But if you don't have the, the extra funding to spare on Patreon, it's the biggest help we can get to just share the videos, post them places, share them with your friends, things like that. So I will see you all next time.